Chapter 2, Sell More, Faster. In my first sales career at the end of the year was always the big push. It was the last attempt to make our sales targets and to achieve bonus status. If we were already at our revenue target for the year, commission rates were boosted. Every sale was worth more money. This is where the big dreams started to feel less like pipe dreams and more like reality. Some reps would be making more money in this one pay period than most people would make in one year. I was determined to be one of those reps. The full month of December would be a buzz. I would hear chatter in the bullpen from several reps as they bragged about spending their bonuses and extra commissions on buying new vehicles, down payments for a condo, or going on a luxurious vacation. For a select few of us who would make over 150% of our targeted plan, this also included a flight and a four-night stay at a five-star resort with the senior executives of our company for the President's Club. Every year it was some brand new, beautiful, and exotic location. This year, it was Maui. For those who hadn't achieved their plan yet, this was the final push to make it past the goal line. It felt like the movie Glen Gary, Glen Ross. If you were at the top, there was nothing to worry about. But if you were at the bottom, the end of the year meant you had a lot of work ahead of you, which could also mean looking for a new job. I was safe. I was better than safe. My year was already made. Now I was making a play not only for another deal or two, but for whatever it took to become top rep of the year. As the final days of the year came to a close, I was still making deals and smashing the gong in the middle of the bullpen, announcing another contract had been signed. I was on top of the world. Beside me sat Keith. Keith struggled through every day. He fought tooth and nail to get every deal he could to date, and December weighed down on him heavier than anything else. Every day Keith would come in and you could see the desperation on his face. He did the work. He worked hard. Some would even argue he worked harder than anyone else in the bullpen. But Keith couldn't close a deal if his life depended on it. And in some ways it did. Because as December came closer and closer to an end, it was his life at the company which was now in jeopardy. My sales territory wasn't anything different than Keith's. We had the same number and mix of clients and prospects to go after. I wasn't a better salesperson than Keith. We went to Xerox sales school at the same time. At that time, he had two years of previous sales experience, whereas I'd start right out of university as my first job. So all being equal, why was I sitting as number two in the entire country and Keith was struggling to make ends meet? It was attitude. I continued to close more deals in December than any other month that year. In fact, I did almost three months worth of sales in that single month. I booked meetings with clients to get to know them and their goals. I showed genuine interest in their business and showed them how I could help them save money or many times how I could help them make more money by showing them how to sell a new product or service to their clients. I was confident because I truly loved helping others. And when I left a meeting knowing, sale aside, I was helping another business and individual, my confidence grew. Yes, I truly wanted more deals, but if I didn't get it in the month of December, I was also okay. My boss often told me, Kim, we're still open in January. People will decide when the timing is right for them. I wanted more deals and I was working hard for every single one, calling on former clients and prospective new ones, stopping in at locations with boxes of chocolates to introduce myself. I considered myself hungry while Keith was desperate. I was willing to work hard for a deal and be okay if the client said yes or no. Keith, on the other hand, needed any sale and tried to push for the yes as quickly as possible. He would also put so much pressure on himself that he needed the yes, that if the client said no, it would crush him. The same way dogs can smell fear, clients can smell desperation, and no one wants to say yes to a desperate salesperson. Keith offered his prospects the deal of a lifetime. He would suggest there would never be another deal as good again. And if the client said no, he'd ask, well, why not? And how come? He could argue his questions were focused on the client, but the truth was his mind was really focused on him. He worried about how he was gonna pay his bills and what he would do if he lost his job. 
He would put all his energy into every single client with whom he met, and despite giving it everything he had, they continually said no. Deflated, he'd go back to his car and try all over again until he was too exhausted to keep going. Day by day, each time feeling more defeated and exhausted. I think most of us have been there, or at least have known a Keith. Someone who tries with everything they've got, and yet it's somehow not enough to get the sale. They walk around exhausted. They need every dollar that comes in, and they will do anything for it. What's really happened is they forgot the reasons they are there to sell in the first place. It's to help someone else achieve their dreams, not them. Zig Ziglar has a wonderful quote. You can have everything you want in life when you help enough other people get what they want. Keith's dreams may have been fulfilled, but only after he connects deeply and helps others get what they want. Keith's attitude needs to change, and then the sales will follow, not the other way around. So how did I know it was attitude and not some external factor? Maybe Keith wasn't cut out for sales, which many people will say about themselves. Maybe despite what I said before, Keith's territory wasn't that great. Maybe it was completely tapped out of all potential sales, which is also something many people will say about their own client base, territories, or service offerings. None of that was true. There's an old sales joke about two shoe salespeople who were sent to a remote island. Within a day of arriving, they sent a message back to the head office. Salesperson number one, no opportunities here. No one wears shoes. Salesperson number two, this island is a gold mine. No one wears shoes. Feeling he had to find a change, Keith left the company in the new year. Within a couple of weeks, a new salesperson had taken over Keith's old territory. Shauna was brand new to sales and was one of the most positive people I'd ever met. She wasn't even finished her third month and she was trending to become one of the top salespeople in the company. Shauna wasn't more skilled. The client base hadn't changed. Shauna was just genuinely keen. She was excited to help her clients. She came in every day despite how bad it was the day before, ready to tackle the world and provide amazing value to everyone she interacted with. More than anything, sales is an attitude. It's an attitude of giving, an attitude of being of service to others, and always staying positive in the face of adversity. Not every sale will go your way. Not every person will understand the benefits of what your service will bring to them. That's okay. Keep being positive. Keep believing in yourself. Keep sharing your gift with the world. There is an art to sales, but sales is first and foremost a numbers game. No matter how good you are, no matter how good your product or service is, you will never be able to find 100% of the people with whom you speak ready and able to buy in that moment. Many conversations will take days, weeks, months, and sometimes years before the prospect is fully ready. Keep being a better person every day. Don't take rejection personally. One day that prospect will say yes. And when they do, they'll follow up by saying, I wish we would have used you sooner. The one thing which remains constant is making sales, building a business, creating your empire, whatever your dream holds, takes time and a lot of patience. If you tell yourself it's hard, everyone else can do it or you're not good enough, this game will take its toll on you. If you want to be more successful in your business, value yours and others' time for what it is, the most valuable resource. Maximize it. Don't waste a single second of any day worrying about how you will pay your bills, where the next sale will come from, or what could have been or said done differently in that last call, sales meeting, or proposal. It's not worth it. Change it if you can and move on if you can't. Being negative, anxious, or worried doesn't solve anything. It doesn't serve anyone. Instead, ask yourself, what could you be thinking about and doing instead to focus on creating abundance? We all have the same limited time in a day. For every second you are focused on something outside of your control, you rob yourself of time you could be focusing the same energy on creating something amazing. Hours and days will pass you by. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. You can either choose to be obsessed with what you can't control or with what you can. 